All right. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Planet Xbox Episode 7, powered by Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Network, Weapon Wheel Patreon. Uh, man, I'm your host, Best Bot Kiss Move. Got my co host, ILP, Lord Attic. What's going on? What's going on, guys? So, we, we actually have a pretty hectic week of news. You know, especially this FTC. You know what's funny, Smooth? I didn't. I never like talking about the FTC stuff, but this trial makes it feel like all that bullshit was worth it. But uh, you were ignoring the entire shenanigans for pretty much the first two years. To, yeah, uh, to get to the trial point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, some juicy things have have come out. Um, some exciting, some worrying, and. Um, but pretty much I was hoping by the uh, by the time we did the show that it would be over. And technically it is over. The court hearings are done. We're just waiting on the um, judge to uh, file their um, their make to make her decision uh, whether she's going to grant the FTC the PI or if, you know, or, if you know, Xbox going to be able to close this deal. Uh, but before we get into all that. Uh, let's get into what is helping make this show possible, and that's Patreon. So we always open the show with the uh, Patreon uh, questions. Um, but before we get that, we usually uh, quick recap what you're playing, Attic. Final Fantasy 16. Boo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my opinions still stand. It's a fun game. Uh, you know. To some people, I can understand why it would be a game of the year. Mm-hmm. It is no longer on my game of the year list, but I can understand why people enjoy it. You know, if you like shiny objects, you know, that this game's probably for you. But if you liked some of the older Final Fantasies, particularly up to like 12, even 13 and 15, 13, and it's uh, spin offs in 15, yep. you might not like this game. <clears throat> um, I'm currently playing. Uh, a mixture of right now I'm playing uh, AEW uh, Fight Forever just came out a couple of days ago. Put a re- review up on the channel. Go check that out. Um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's an attempt. It's it's AEW's a, a new wrestling company to compete with the likes of WWE and you know I don't know what other wrestling companies are out there like TNA. Black Baron wrestles wrestles for AEW, but he's like kind of he does like the house shows. He doesn't. He's not like a a superstar or, or a star here that would appear in this video game. But um, it's uh the gameplay. One it was maybe he'll get a DLC. Hopefully. It was developed by uh, uh, you. Question: Would you play his bar? I would. That's. I was hoping he would be in the game, and I play. I'd play as him, um, for sure. Um, the game is 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 developed by uh, Ukes and uh, I think uh, is T. I forget who the other company, but the, what makes this game intriguing is that Ukes is involved in, and they've done the games are the classic games we like, like. Uh, WWF No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000, WCW versus NWO Revenge. So it has that gameplay element. Um, and the last game that had that type of gameplay element that anybody played probably was Def Jam Vendetta, uh, which borrowed that gameplay mechanic. Um, and so it's it, it that's is one thing that it does, uh, right? Um, you know, everything else in terms of like the thing, what, th- what brings this game down is actually not really its fault. And that's more so the roster. The roster is uh is very barren. I only play with the characters that I know from the WWE, um, and those characters are all old and past their prime, and they're not as exciting as they once were. Uh, the rest of the talents are uh, not that great. It's not a whole lot of matches going on. Uh, this game is lacking in like commentary. So the gameplay you see here is the ring, right? Usually in wrestling games nowadays, with all the commotion and stuff going on, there's uh commentators talking about what's happening in the game or uh, in the match like when you pull off like a good move like a power bomb they're like power bomb oh my god he's got to be feeling it like none of that exists in this game uh and which makes while you're playing it just makes the, the game is very quiet and bearing 
and and it, it, it gets boring. So the thing is, the the fun to be had in this game is literally couch multiplayer or online multiplayer. And you gotta, you know, obviously, and you also gotta be a fan of uh, the series to get even a little bit. Because if you're already not a fan of AEW and its roster, then the only thing that could save it is the game, right? And the fun factor. And that's what it's sort of missing right now. But it was a good first effort. You know, right now I'm playing it, play it, created my character. Um, I like the moves I set. Um, and I'm probably going to, you no, know, it's going to be that game that I play, like how uh, what Madden was when I'm bored or in the middle of a podcast, I need a game to get through. It's generally like a Madden or, you know, a 2K. Now I got AEW. Um, it's 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 hard to recommend for its price. You if you want to play this, you want to rent it, game fly it, or buy it at like maybe twenty thirty bucks. I think you'll get most of your money out of it. Um, buying it now at full price, sixty bucks, probably not the greatest option. Um, but let's get into the Patreon uh, questions uh, for episode seven. Uh, the first question is from uh, Dwight Man. His question says, what game have you beat that you think no one else on the panel has beat? Mine is God Hand. I don't know what that is. Um, but we kind of have a, a, a series of, uh, because there's only only me and Attic, this is fairly easy. We game share, right? So um, he can name almost any game. Um because we don't enjoy the same type of games, and I can almost name any game that I beat that he hasn't beat. Now, if you want to include, like, everybody on, like, Weapon Wheel and stuff like that, then it makes it interesting, because I know there's a ton of games that I beat that they wouldn't even touch. Uh, but you you want to uh, reveal the game? Uh, I'll give you a game. Um, obviously, a game I didn't beat, and then I would say some uh, a game that you think that no one else on a Weapon Wheel panel has beat. The Weapon Wheel panel. <laughs> well, that's kind of hard if you consider like all of Weapon Wheel because I know like no, I would just naturally go, with the go core. to Let's go to the core. I even if I go to the core, like I would naturally say say games like XCOM, but Bond and BG play those. So it's like it's you know Final Fantasy games. Bond and I don't think I don't know if BG's played a lot of the older ones. Um, there's a lot of indie games I play because mm-hmm. I go to like the shows and stuff. So I would say, you know, an indie game, for instance, that, you know, maybe um, F- uh, Phoenix Point. I don't know if they beat I don't that think game. anybody on that freaking panel beat or played even Phoenix Point. It's too hardcore. And they can take that as is what it is. Too hardcore of a game. I don't see them, any of them touching that. Not Blandrew, not Bond, not, not BG, not, not Jack. If I would have beat Hogwarts Legacy... I'd have had a W. I still got to finish my playthrough. I, still I, gotta, I dropped it. I dropped it too. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, hmm. I'm going to say... See, I don't want to say some obscure game. I want to say a game that, that they, any, they could have beaten, but I know for sure they haven't. Um... I'm gonna go with Ravenlock. Did you did you play that game? No, I played the other game they made, uh, uh, Echo uh, Generation. Echo Generation, yeah. and that that was what I saw. Echo Generation just looked like a way better game, but I didn't play Ravenlock. But I was a little disappointed that they abandoned the format they did for Echo Generation. What was the format other than it being a turn-based RPG? <laughs> Just the way they handled the game in general. I mean, a lot of it probably had to do a turn base, but I feel like they built a very solid turn base game. Yeah, uh, I think the only thing about Ravenlock, I, I wish it was more of a Souls game. Um, I think that element plus its graphics would have made it like a definitely a must play. This game's fairly easy; anybody can pick it up and, and beat it. But I hundred percent completed the, the the game, so I'm going to go with Ravenlock. Uh, I know you didn't beat it, and I know. Uh, uh, Weapon will beat it, but just as I didn't even download it, uh, and I'm also gonna go with Bio Mutant. I don't think anybody on the panel on Weapon Will panel has beaten Bio Mutant. Bio Mutant had was one of those uh resurrection gems, like when it first came out, I wasn't really feeling it, and then I played it maybe a year later, and I was like, you know what, 
this is actually pretty damn good. So <laughs> you could theoretically almost say like Hellblade, but I think Jack beat the original Hellblade. Yeah, I think Jack so. beat it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh Bionic Man says when do you guys think the PC Game Pass will have the same games as the Xbox edition? Never. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's the only way I could get some of these games, they have to, but then again, though, most of the games that aren't available, that's when that a hundred percent of the games have to be streamable pretty much at this point. It, it, when, I mean, all games on Xbox, uh, that's on the Xbox version are as are able to be streamed for, through cloud or the uh, cloud to have a cloud version of every game, then they will have all technically all the games because they can just, they maybe they can't download it natively. They can you know just uh, stream it. So um, that's one way. But like Alex said, probably not. <laughs> the problem is, is they still want the services to be you know separate in, in a way as well. PC just has more different types of popular games than console. Mm-hmm. The console market does. So they're naturally going to go towards those type of games. You know, there's a lot. I would say that like some of the Warhammer games probably mm-hmm. would be exclusive uh, to just the PC model. There's a lot of games that's only on PC that's on that service. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Um, this question is from Nightwing77. He says, now that the court hearings are over and waiting for the judge review, which side has the best chance for a victory? I think it's a toss up with both companies having shaky practices and emails leaked. What do you think? So Ooh. logically, when you listen to, because I only listened to the Jim hearing, mm-hmm. I didn't care about the rest. I was very curious to hear what Jim himself would say, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really seem like the FTC has like a huge case to stand on. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is we don't know how deep the politics is, because yeah. you know just as well as me when it comes to the politics of. Of of, of a United States, sometimes it doesn't matter what makes sense. It, we don't know how deep the politics are. Yeah, you know, FTC could literally have no case, but if certain parties have lobbied correctly, they'll still win. Um, how I look at it, 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 it it's weird. Like I didn't think, you know, the CMA would go and block. The thing after everything that came out, they still did a, a last minute change. Oh, cloud's a problem. Block. <laughs> like it's and you know the FTC going as far as it has and uh, the gamer lawsuits and then they're, they're trying to use cheat codes by having these irrelevant ass countries like burning Canada and New Zealand. You know, give their input even though they're beyond their decision point. They let their they let their decision expire. <laughs> Um, you never know. This country is, is, is like, sure. In the case, it, if you're looking at the case, you're reading it in the transcripts. It just seems like there's no way Microsoft is losing this. There's no way they're granting the FTC's, uh, uh, a PI. And what happens is, is that I have to realize, Hey, we live in the United States of America and this country's ran by a bunch of weirdos. And, uh, everything is just to the point, everything this country does is questionable. And the thing is that trickles down from up top up into even the petty shit. So it's like, even though if you ask me who's winning the arguments and, and the public, uh, and of a public opinion, I would say Microsoft, but I have this shaky, uncomfortable feeling that, you know, despite the FTC looking like dog poop, I I have this weird feeling that the judge is going to uh, rule in the FTC's favor. You know, and I hope I'm wrong, but it just that's what it feels like because everything there's been a lot of odd shit going on that doesn't make sense, um, and they've they 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 gone as usual. So it's like I it's like. I don't want to expect them to do something that makes sense when there's a, like a 90% chance they freaking just do something that doesn't make sense. And if that, in the way that this country is being run, I, I I'm leaning towards 
uh, FTC. Well, we'll see. We don't need to go too much into politics. Uh, yeah. So what's the next one? Next question is from Terrence Pryor. He says, how do you feel about Final Fantasy 16 sales? They're pretty strong. Already 3 million. Um, personally, I think a lot of people are trying to get me because uh, I'm the one that said the game will flop uh, or that it's a bad sign. Hey, you know, if they're happy with, with their sales, uh, you know, if I, I recall Final Fantasy 15 doing about 5 million um, in the same period on multiple consoles. So if they value 3 million sold uh, on PlayStation 5 alone versus anything more than that on multiple consoles, then I guess it's a W for them um, overall. Um, yeah, it, it sounds impressive. And, and this says a lot. The PlayStation 5 has been out. Uh, for three years, and this is the best-selling PS5 exclusive to date. Even like over God of War. God of War is a PS4 game; it's a cross-gen game, so it doesn't really oh. count. I'm talking about PS5 exclusive. So all those other attempts, like Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, uh, Forspoken, um, what else did they release on the PS5 as a, a PS5 only game? Um, those all sold slowly and then obviously their exclusive uh attempts like ghostwire tokyo uh death loop uh uh they were all pretty much i mean failures they were not commercially uh successful so it's like it didn't make no sense for those games to be exclusive uh to begin with and so that's what the trend i was going for is like hey historically the ps any triple a ps5 exclusive godfall and all that stuff what? they all they all flopped they all sold you know poorly in comparison and this is the first one to be successful and um it, it's not saying much the thing is, is that all right in the long haul like it, what is this going to be all right it, i i predict that it'll yeah it sold fast the first week but i feel like it's going to be a steep drop off uh, you know, going into next weekend and moving forward. This game is breaking PlayStation 5s. It's not what... The thing is, the, this is why you can't... I can't stand uh, video games, the reviews and stuff like that. The game came in, people were excited, right? Early into the game, people are excited. And then as you're playing it, and from what I read about it, it becomes less and less of like, you know, Final Fantasy. More of the flaws have come in. Sure, does the game look great? Yes, it does. Does it has a you know good you know unique story? Yes, it does. But it's less of Final Fantasy. It's a great. It's probably a great game, not a great Final Fantasy game. And um, I'm not like you know mad at the sales. Um, um, if they're happy with that, so that means uh, the way I look at it is like, damn, if we had if we did release the same game on multiple platforms with the same hype and stuff like that, we had an opportunity to sell five plus million versus the 3 million that we're stuck with early on. And instead of probably maxing out at around 6 million, we probably could have done, you know, 12 to 15 million overall. And I don't think this game is doing 12 to 15 million on PS5 alone in its lifetime. So that's my thoughts would on you, that. Would you consider Final Fantasy as a brand bigger than Ratchet & Clank as a brand? Yes, it is. I, I would consider, like, as a pure PlayStation 5 only this is their biggest launch they've had since launch. Yeah. Because, like, Miles was a was a cross-generation mm -hmm. game. God of War was. So you could argue that Final Fantasy 16 is their biggest game they've dropped since yeah. the PlayStation... Only on PlayStation 5. Because, yeah. obviously, I would say God of War is bigger. But God of War came out on the PlayStation 4. Yes. Spider-Man 2 would be bigger than this, but it's not out yet. Yeah. True, true. So that's going to be the the apex. So we expect. So if if, if Final Fantasy did three million in a week, then you know Spider Man should be able to perform that in this day, and probably in a week it should probably meet you know the goals of like five or six million, given um you know the popularity. But then again, people might be Spider Man fatigued, being that there's been a Spider Man game every almost every year uh um since spider-man 2018 not to say that it's just you got to consider your spider-man 2018 and then um miles uh morales in uh 2020 and then you got the pc release in 2021 and then the pc release of miles Morales, and the next thing you know you got spider-man uh um two 
It, not to say that they, I don't think the game's going to flop, but it would be the true testament of what this game may actually uh, sell. Um, and I think that if if it's if people are still on that super hype train, and I think Spider Man could sell could sell five million. If, if Final Fantasy could do three million in in a couple of days, and then Spider Man should be able to do five million um, in um, in the same time span. Uh, I hear you. My truck nut says one's got to go. Everything they made. Gears franchise, Halo franchise, Forza franchise. Which one? Are- Forza. <laughs> Boy, it's not even a question. To me. Forza. I- I'd rather get rid of Forza mm. and the other, all the Forzas before I get rid of any of that. Like, because I don't know if. Like, they're talking specifically about a specific type of Forza. Mm -hmm. I'd get rid of the whole brand before Mm -hmm. I get rid of Gears or Halo. Okay. Um, That's fair. Uh, That's fair. Uh, There is an argument for... There is an argument for Forza, right? Because... I'm no, not, I'm not, not, I'm not, not saying, me. I'm not saying, not no, to me. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying that this is like, I would actually pick, but the reason why I'm saying is that when you look at the game releases in their trajectory, Halo, both Halo and Gears put out, had, you know, poor performing games later, you know, judgment was, uh, you know, wasn't received well gears 4 and gears 5 were not received as well as the original trilogy they're averaging about like an 85 uh versus what gears 1 through 3 they were all averaging you know 90s uh same thing with halo there for the first trilogy was averaging 90s and you know latter games are in like they 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 peak at around like an 86 maybe 87 average and forza has been relatively always a uh, well the forza horizons there is, is pretty much a guaranteed 90 and the forces those are high they 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 are pretty much uh they're at what the the downside of halo and gears are right the motorsports are generally 85 through 88 right and forza horizons is pretty much 89 to 93 um, but if you want to argue Metacritic score, however, personally, in my personal taste, yeah, uh, one would have to go would be Forza. Um, I feel like games like Halo and Gears inspired too many other games and their the, 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 the level of game time, even to this day, even though I played a lot of Forza Horizon 2 and I think Forza Horizon 5 and Forza Horizon 3, I played a lot. Those hours still don't equate to the hours I put in Halo 3 alone and in, in Halo 5 alone and um in Gears 2 alone. Like Gears 2 is is, is still my uh uh favorite, and that was a broken game as far as multiplayer wise. Um and Gears 3, obviously. Um, but yeah, I Forza would have to have to go personally for me in my opinion. But I can understand the argument some if somebody was to pick one of the other two over Forza because, like I said, it has been um, the better performing in terms of uh, uh, success in, in terms of like better rated games, um, and, and whereas both Gears and Halo took a down uh, downturn. Um, Here, here's my thing though. Yeah. Even though that m- you could make an argument that. Forza has been hotter than the other two currently. Mm-hmm. You take away Forza or Halo or out of the equation, it's going to dramatically damage the Xbox brand. You take away yeah. Forza, it's going to hurt it, but not nearly as bad as it's going to hurt any of the other ones. You can literally build Forza five or six times under different names and take all those mm-hmm. away from Xbox, and it would be a drastic amount of damage that would be getting rid of gears or halo without halo xbox never would have went mainstream without gears it wouldn't have picked up the the success that halo had and carried through the 360. yeah you're right you're absolutely right in terms of the impact like i said once you get rid of you're getting rid of 
the entire catalog. So that means Xbox doesn't get off the ground without Halo, uh, the original Xbox. So it's not even a brand without Halo. Um, and um, the 360, even though the 360 had a lot of like success and Gears was a big part of that, but it does put a big hole into um, Xbox. Um, and then Forza is does pretty much the saving greats of the Xbox One because uh, even though it was introduced during, I want to say the when it was Forza introduced, was it? It was during the 360 um, era, I believe. It was the 360 era, um, but it didn't take off really until the Xbox One era. Um, but uh, yes, you're right. You're right. Serial Mint Twenty Three says, "If Xbox ceased to exist, who would you rather fanboy for, Sony or Nintendo?" Uh, I, now, if PC is not an option, because that's what I would ultimately pick. Um, if if PC is not an option, that's who I would I would ultimately pick. But for out of PlayStation and Sony, see. Nintendo, I, I ju- I'm just not, uh, as a kid... Here, here's a caveat that he should have put in yeah. there. If Xbox is taken away, the the war between Nintendo fanboys and PlayStation fanboys is going to amp up like a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's not that... Because, like, for the most part, let's be real here, like, the Nintendo fanboys, you don't really hear from them too much. But if the Xbox fans, and the, if they had to go somewhere... Mm-hmm. You're, there's going to be way more drama between those two than they are right now with just Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, if he's saying, would I rather, who would I change uh, to be a fanboy for? Again, Nintendo, I'm not a big fan of Nintendo. I'm not a fan. Like, I, GameCube days, loved them, was my platform. N64 days, loved it, was my platform. Um, I'm not, I don't, and, and even I, the pre like Super Nintendo, I don't count because I, I, I wasn't counting generations then. It was just, it was a, it was a console that we all had. Uh, I'm not a fan of any of the Wii's. I'm not even that big of a fan of the Switch. Uh, so it would be hard for me, um, to, to really do that for Nintendo. And the thing is, I don't hate Nintendo, it's just that I don't like. I don't like them, so I don't really have I don't have commentary or discussions about it. none of the games that they release, you know, amps me up or anything like that. Um, to want to go out and get it or to want to spend too many hours into it. So I, I don't see myself parading around it. You know, uh, could I see myself arguing with a PlayStation fanboy in favor of Nintendo? Probably, but personally, I prefer PlayStation games to. Nintendo games th- these days, I prefer PlayStation platform to Nintendo platform because, like I said, uh, even though there's things that PlayStation ripped off of uh, Xbox, I like having some sort of reward system, trophy system, um, and you know, I you know, to having like a you know a database and and a profile where I can really like celebrate my accomplishments in gaming. I think let's be right here, smooth. <laughs> you. It's been rough as an Xbox One. Okay, if 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 Xbox shut down tomorrow, mm. I recommend you go to Nintendo. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah, nah, I wouldn't do at that. least at least most of the time you're gonna have W sales when it comes to their games and console sales when it comes to their console. Mm. We don't know what the Switch Two, or Switch mm. Ver- Pro, or whatever it's gonna be called. Yeah, but if it's got if it's still the same concept that the Switch is, most likely it's gonna dominate too. So, yeah, as your friend and seeing you struggle through the Xbox One era and the beginning of this Xbox Series X era, I recommend you go to the W so you actually have ammo most of the week. <laughs> like, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it would be easy to argue in favor of uh, Nintendo. I, I, I don't think I could ever be a PlayStation fanboy, though. Them dudes are weirdos. It's like there's something wrong with them mentally i I don't think i could get that low say what they better watch out a lot of them watch that show yeah yeah, it is what it is it's like that but it's the truth this is just how i feel i think there uh, is something i i I can never bring myself like 
you got people online seven days a week and the people think and the thing is i get criticized for like dumb shit like but seven days a week just bashing and tweeting about xbox seven days a week no break they'll people literally get will have an emergency and once they recover come back to <laughs> dismissing Ooh. like xbox and it's like i don't have that energy i don't even have that energy for places because people think because of who i am they just assume i spend every day talking about play i don't talk about playstation i talk about xbox and yeah, then very I argue, rarely you talk I, about playstation and i talk about but you did try to start a podcast called the playstation i tried to shit fell planet Play playstation <laughs> it, shit failed miserably um all right so Let's get the show started. Shout out to everybody who submitted questions. These were good, really, really good questions. I can relate to all of them. So keep them coming, you know, for episode eight. You know, get those uh, questions um, coming. Um, Attic, where do we go, man? Like, you've, again, you've sort of benefited from some of these uh, leaks and, you know, information coming out of these court cases and what Microsoft's intentions, other third parties, and Jim Ryan. Where should we start, man? What what do we do and like where do we go from here? Because there's there's a lot of information that came out and some of the stuff I'm you know I was very, you know, very excited for and some uh I So wasn't. I guess the first thing we could talk about is the overall mm -hmm. acquisition spree that's that place that Microsoft had. Apparently Xbox had over a hundred developers or publishers they were looking at it mm -hmm. at acquiring at one time. Do you have the list? No, that's a good question. Let me go. Get, yeah, go ahead and get the get list. list. Uh, then I think we should talk about the Square Enix one because apparently in 2019, they actually had a very... I don't know if the conversation went to Square Enix. I assume it did mm -hmm. because it looked like there was some kind of game plan notes in, in, the, uh, in the paperwork for it. Yeah, And then it looks like they also were very considering buying Bungie and Sega at one point. And then I guess we'll talk about like some of the testimonies from like Jim Ryan, you know, Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, you know, so, some of these, these FTC lawyers don't, doesn't really look like they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Like, uh, man, I don't even have this list, but the, the thing is, it's like, so pretty much that list was just points of interest. They didn't talk to like all of them they this was the people that made it to like their final list uh, which it was like i think it turned out to be like four uh, we know you know sega bungie uh there was the uh oh my god there's another one that's there that's smaller um it's off the tip of my tongue i think it starts with like a like a p um i'm gonna see what can i search up and then obviously square enix was um there i want to be able to read that insert it's like where did I see all this data? And I usually send them to myself uh, so that I well, can... Well, we could see them on Twitter, but Elon's got us all on some limit shit yeah. right now. So. Oh, yeah, what, what is that? What is he doing to us? Oh, we're apparently... If you're not verified, you only have like a 600 post where you could see a, le a day right now. Oh, that's... Wow. That's corny. That's corny. It won't last long. All right. Um... But let's talk about the first. Let's talk about that. Um, the whole the Sega Bungie acquisition that because that apparently now these emails were from um, uh, last uh, not last year. It was it was a year prior to the. I'm gonna say November of. No, uh, November. Of, it, it, oh, these questions, these talks were taking place in 2020, right? So we know uh, they went with Bethesda and um, and I was, I was told Bungie was almost bought. Yeah, they were. Yeah, I remember it. I remember they that could, they couldn't come to an agreement on how much it would cost. But then, 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 then Sony ended up agreeing to um three bill was uh, they probably uh -huh. valued like bungie you know less than three billion i would have uh 
But uh, the idea is that the thing about the Sega thing is that I think I would personally would have been more excited for Sega. And I think we're not any stupid ass court hearings if it were Sega. I think the deal yeah, we're closed. Not. I think you buy it Sega. It would have closed, closed a long time months. ago. Yeah. The thing is, is nothing, even when you combine all of Sega together, it's not as valuable enough to PlayStation to spend thousands and thousands on trying to stop it. Because, I mean, you could sit there, oh, you know, they don't have a lawyer in the matter or anything like that, but they've definitely flew Jim Ryan out to multiple different countries, multiple different times, mm -hmm. and, you know, his ass ain't doing nothing that's not first class. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they spent a lot of money trying to stop this deal. All right, so I got a copy of the email for Sega. I don't have it for um, uh, Square Enix, if you, if, if you want me to read it. Um, so this is, uh, Phil Spencer reached out to Amy Hood and Satya Nadella, um, and of course all the- Who's Amy Hood? Amy Hood, she's like the, uh, she's up there next to Satya in, um, like in terms of, I think she has more of an, um, like they have to get approval from her for these acquisitions. So she's like, a, I forget her position, but uh, she's like senior something vice or whatever, whatever. I don't know, I, pardon me for not knowing for sure, but I know her position is up there. Um, she said, he says, um, I'm writing to request strategy approval to approach Sega Sammy regarding a potential acquisition of their Sega gaming studios. For context, Bill and I have reviewed the business case for acquiring Sega and both supportive. We believe that Sega has built a well-balanced portfolio of games across segments with global geographic appeal and will help us accelerate Xbox Game Pass both on and off console. Please find the attached memo and bullets below for additional detail in our strategy to prioritize our next acquisition target a brief overview of Sega's gaming portfolio and the value drivers for their potential acquisition. As the Sega gaming studios are owned by Sega Sammy, a publicly traded Japanese company, we have called out a few deal complexities in the memo. Sega's gaming has represented roughly half of Sega Sammy's revenue and operating income, or 900 million of revenue and 60 to 90 million of operating income. In each of Sega Sammy's last three fiscal years, the team is coordinating closely with the CELA on the next steps of where to receive SA, I'm going to say street strategic approval. Please let us know if you have any questions or concerns or would like us to schedule a time to discuss live things. Uh, and it says pri prioritizing acquisition targets just to help inform our strategic acquisition targets. We have identified top priority segments and geographic combinations for Xbox in order. PC in North America and Europe, mobile in North America and Europe, console and PC and a, I'm gonna say APAC, that's Asia Pacific something, something. Keeping in mind these leading priorities we evaluated is a set of targets in both individually and combination of our own studios to determine a best strategic fit Strategic fit. Sega is the most attractive next. You don't have to keep reading. No, no, no. We get the general address. Yeah, yeah. So Sega, Sega. So, so I, I care more. I care more about the Sega thing than Bungie. I don't care if they acquire Bungie or not. I think Bungie is overvalued, uh, overrated. Um, yeah, and let's be real here. The majority of the reason people will say to buy Bungie is because they act like if they own Bungie, yep. they would just go back to making Halo. Yeah, absolutely. No, and that's that, not, that's not what would happen. Yeah, they would most likely do exactly what happened when they were bought by PlayStation. They would continue to work on Matter, wherever the hell that game's called, yep. and then they would also continue to support Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Because why? Like they they want a games as a service. So what does it make more sense to try to relaunch Halo again as a games as a mm -hmm. service, or to try or to nurture? The one of the one of the best games of the service that's on the market right now. Like Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um I think so the the Sega thing again, I feel like it would I would have been more excited for this because like I said, it would have closed quicker. Uh even though they said it, it, there's another report out there, documentation that said they would keep games multi platform. Um 
they would even have more of an incentive and they would have been able to make those games exclusive without any question. You know what I mean? But uh, clearly, you know, Xbox is not popular in Japan. So it, I don't know if it would serve it would how it would serve them to do that. Um, they probably would keep those multiplayer out of goodwill and that would really be more so a game pass move. But, um, and, and the thing is, is that this email actually, there's a date on this email. Um, uh, what was it? What was the date? Come on. The date on this email is November 10th, 2020. So this is obviously this is already after the, but that Zenimax deal was announced. It's just that it didn't, the Zenimax deal didn't close until March of, of the following year. So my thing is what happened between now and then? Cause obviously it's 2023. There's no acquisition. Did they approve them to go and talk to them? We know Bungie was already scooped up by Sony and Sony Bungie was scooped up. Um, and, um, well, after Xbox did a uh, ABK announcement, they did that maybe the summer of 2022, maybe. If I'm well, not... if I remember correctly, you know, I, I don't remember 100 percent of stuff Jim Ryan said mm -hmm. when they announced the Activision deal, mm -hmm. they already were closing the deal with Bungie. So it was it wasn't a reactionary thing. You know, who knows if Sony probably knew that Activision was being bought mm -hmm. or at least the you know the merger was was going to start the process i'm just curious if at that time when they did find out before the public found out yeah. did they try to captivate something just as big i'm curious to see like the timeline that all these happen yeah no same here like um like we all been wanting you know the xbox sega deal to come through and you know what's crazy though you know what's crazy I believe they had to have talked to Sega. You know why? Because this was all. Remember, this I'm looking at the date that this email went out. Remember during those times where uh, that that Sega picture of the person laying on the desk with their arms on the X, and then they had the little Sonic Blue controller. I think they were gearing up, and Yakuza was in Game Pass day and um, day and date uh, when, for the launch of the Series X, Yakuza Seven, like a dragon. Um, mm -hmm. And that was at the time they were making you know, all these uh, agreements with Sega, uh, Sega put in like damn near all the Yakuza's in the game pass. I, I'm just curious of what to happen. Like maybe is this still on a, a thing and it's on hold until this thing closes. And the thing is, remember Sega Sammy, they're not buying the entire Sega. They're buying a portion. They're buying something from Sega Sammy. So it doesn't have to go through the same scrutiny and they could probably only require one approval and that's Japan FTC, which they would get. Like, I'm just curious to like, how close was them to was they are to doing this and it's if it's still an option and does it and if so, how soon does it happen after this deal closes? Well, I think that maybe what's interesting is the fact that they separated. Cause if you go look at the timeline, mm -hmm. Sega started separating their laundry with Sammy around that exact time. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if this is one of those things where they're like, get your shit in order. Then we'll have a conversation. And then when the Activision thing happened, if it's just something that Xbox is no longer interested in, mm -hmm. or it's one of those things where it's like the Activision thing happened and they're like, we got to put a hold on this and revisit this later. And I'm wondering if they'll even attempt to to go out and buy Sega afterwards. Now, I think Sega, I don't know. But because doesn't that so put somebody issue... else um, in line to buy them, though, at that point? Because this was only from what we saw in the numbers. We're looking at a $3 billion acquisition. Oh. Who realistically, besides like the big at this point like, for Sony to buy freaking Bungie for three billion, they could have turned around and bought Sega or Screen. It, but it, is the relationship good enough to clear that money? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's like I've said a couple times, it's easier to convince everyone in the room to spend three billion dollars when they know they're sitting on mm -hmm. quadruple and times that by two in cash. Mm -hmm. That's the, the point of Microsoft. It's easier to go in there with all these executives and convince them to potentially risk your bonuses and stuff 
for margins mm -hmm. because they know they got so much money on hand. Yeah. Plus, with inflation coming up, it's probably cheaper to spend that on IP, which you could realistically sell later for more if you grow yeah. the brand. Yeah. It's not as easy to convince executives at Sony to spend $3 billion, which they could easily come up with that. They might even have that in cash themselves. But it, it's a way bigger risk because they don't have the cash flow that a bigger company like Microsoft has. Yeah, so my thing is, right, so how... Uh... I figured it would be worth, like, to Amazon or someone, it would yeah. be worth buying Sega just for Sonic. Yeah, that IP. You know, the I like, damn, dude. Um, it's just I don't want them to lose out. Like, I was upset when they lost out on the opportunity to buy uh, the Square Enix um, Western Studios. Like, I didn't even want the whole Square Enix. I wanted, you know, Crystal Dynamics and, you know, Adios and stuff like that because I felt like it would have been, you know, extremely beneficial uh, for me. Um, I think I just hope that there's just, just as an Xbox fan, that this is still something that uh, can happen, you know, post um, ABK. Uh, the, the other big one, obviously, the Square Enix one, um, which I don't know if Square Enix has come out and said anything in regards to that. Um, we know, was it last year uh, where they sold a portion of, they, they sold obviously their Western division, right? Crystal Dynamics, NXL, and I think at the time that xbox was looking at square enix they're looking at it with crystal dynamics and stuff intact yes i think that was definitely the goal would you you want me to just take over my conspiracy theory please please i'm curious thing? all right so, so i'm convinced that microsoft and i have heard rumors but i just i ignored them because it was such a far-fetched theory and some of the people that were telling me it's actually trust I believe that Microsoft reached out to Square Enix and they were fully prepared to buy them. It's been very well documented and known that the higher up when it comes to executives wasn't like in the Final Fantasy VII remake fiasco. And it's been very well known that Microsoft, especially Phil Spencer, was trying to improve the JRPG part portion of Game Pass. I think that they approached them in 19 to to engage a conversation probably took a couple months to to you know get back and forth it's not like you know microsoft would have to go all the way to japan most likely for that conversation or them come to united states and you know especially with them running companies it's not easy i assume that took probably six months just to, ha to have the sit downs and yeah. talk about the purchase yep and then i think that they came to some form of agreement because then that's when you started seeing all the Final Fantasies go into Game Pass. You started seeing uh, Phil Spencer coming out there saying very, if I remember correctly, very confidently that 14 was coming to the game, uh, coming to the platform. That At that time, that's when the Final Fantasy VII remake embargo uh, was, lift, uh, was, was extended for some reason. Mm -hmm. Like, because we thought, like, I was told, way back when they announced 20, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake that it was coming to Xbox. Something happened between now and then, and I keep in mind it's a good four years. Something happened between now and then. Well, that at that time where it was bought, uh, extended, and that time where it happened. Because I was told by people I really trust, and it was like one of those jokes, like, don't worry, man, we never said it wasn't coming here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So... And that was like 2018, 17. That was a long time ago. So I think they had an agreement. And I think what happened was they went ahead and was going to save like the Final Fantasy VII remake. Because I don't know if they ever started a port, but it would have made more sense to start a, a Final Fantasy VII remake port and announce it together. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what happened, but you started seeing games leave Game Pass. Now you're not getting Octopath Traveler. So my theory is, and, and, the, and the timelines do add up smooth, okay. is that they were really considering it. They had really good 
conversations with them. They maybe had a deal together, maybe didn't, maybe had terms. Maybe the all the games coming to Game Pass throughout that year and a half was was a what's the word I'm looking for? A gesture of good faith to get those conversations going. You saw Dragon Quest show up on the platform. You saw all the Dragon Quest at one time that's on modern consoles are all on used to be on Xbox. They even had Dragon Quest on Xbox Game Pass. Yes. Yeah. Octopath Traveler came date and date to Xbox Game Pass. Hey, Kit Smooth, is, is Octopath Traveler on PlayStation? Not the first one. No. Why was the first one ported? And it was never ported to PlayStation. At this point, it should have been over there. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. And then, you know, obviously Rebirth, we weren't going to get that most likely. If Microsoft bought them, they probably would have. We're taking Rebirth off your shit. We're putting it on our shit. <laughs> we'll see you in court. Like, <laughs> But obviously that happened. And, and I don't know if I should say this. I'm Go ahead, say it. Uh I was told that there's friction because of it. And look at, like, Jess Corden. Jess Corden even commented and said the issue between Xbox and PlayStation, uh, Xbox and Square Enix, Xbox does have fault in that relationship. Did he not say that? Yes. So, to me, that's what's happening here. When that deal was thrown through, because you got to keep in mind, we didn't we didn't hear about the Activision deal to the beginning of the year, and I would mm. say they were talking about that agreement for a couple months before it happened, maybe a couple weeks if it came mm. up really, really fast. But to me, this is just retaliation. It's like, you know, we were expecting this. You were supposed to buy these cups. Because then if you look at it, like seven months after the, the deal was made, mm -hmm. they sold their Western division. Yes. So to me, there's just so much going on at the same time frame of two years. I don't believe in coincidences to that degree. And now they're treating us like second class citizen, not getting us any of their games for the most part. I don't know what happened with Crisis Core. Maybe that was a contract that, that they couldn't get out of. Or mm -hmm. maybe Crisis Core just wasn't worth enough money to fight. I don't know. Maybe they had to pay out some of the contracts. And maybe after that, they went to PlayStation and they offered. Because to me, why is Octopath Travel 2 not on game on Xbox, at least Xbox? That still doesn't make any sense to me. They, they have said multiple times that they were proud and happy with the, the success that Octopath. Maybe not sell-wise, but I've seen social media accounts saying that they were happy with the turnout for Octopath Travel. Maybe they were capping. I don't know. It was some of the community manager people. Mm -hmm. But to me, there's a lot of things in that whole situation that makes no sense. I'm probably wrong. So I said in my video, it's a tinfoil hat time. I'm probably about to buy a prop as a tinfoil hat when I talk about stuff like that. It's going to be shaped like a like a wizard hat. hat. It's going to be like have a black thing. It's going to have nothing but tinfoil on. I'm going to put that sucker on. And that's when I'm going to start saying my, uh, my conspiracy theories. Because how do we go from one year? It's about a year and a half difference. Mm-hmm. All the Final Fantasy games ported on Xbox in Game Pass, Dragon Quest in Game Pass, all of these games hitting Game Pass, Outriders coming to Game Pass mm -hmm. to nothing. And they haven't released one game in Game Pass or really on Xbox in general on the platform besides like Final Fantasy Origin. Maybe they knew that game was going to be dog shit. That's why they did it. I don't know. I'm sure the Weapon Well community is going to love to clown on me for that. I don't read the comment sections anyway. Still, I ain't going to see it. But it is one of the things that would start to make a lot of sense on what is going on. Yeah, um, so pretty much your take is they had an agreement for the deal. And because of the ABK thing happened, it, they had you know, to drop it. They had to drop it, and that forced Square Enix to pivot. And because they thought they were probably on pace to make four, five, six, five billion, maybe who's that? They here's the thing. 
even though Square Enix would have been a, an amazing buy for them, get they would still probably in some ways want Square Enix over Activision. Like in terms of genre defining, in terms mm -hmm. of being in places that, that they're weak in. Yeah. But the money from Call of Duty is so profoundly high. Yeah. That it alone is worth dropping that that acquisition. Yeah. To get Call of Duty on your side. Yeah. So that happened and it's and, it, keep in mind it's worth it enough for Jim Ryan's crying on Twitter almost weekly over it. Yeah. So that happens. That forced them to pivot. And they said, you know, F it. They unloaded their Western to Embracer. Um, and they pretty much... And keep I, in mind, like all, they, the, in, all the Embracer Western studios are working on Xbox games. Yeah. My thing is, is that... It's like there was a contract in place, Smooth. That's... Yeah. So the thing is, though, so they sold them... And and people thought like, all right, they're making themselves more attractive to someone, right? If you're gonna sell off your Western studios and all your Japan based studios and IPs are going pretty much being developed as PlayStation exclusives or non Xbox uh games. I feel like after this that the Western uh, sell-off. I feel like they primed themselves to put themselves in position to sell the PlayStation. They, you know, they stopped development for Xbox. So it seemed like a, you know, a, a, a petty move. So at this point in time, I feel like the Square Enix, yeah, it might have been in talks, and I feel like the deal is dead because that, at that point, I'm not. If I'm Xbox, I'm not buying Square Enix as is. I wouldn't be buying Square Enix as is. Uh, would you? If you uh, if if this deal closed, ABK deal closed, would you buy uh, would you buy Square Enix as it is? With just the Japanese yeah. part, yes. And so that's where I think it's like I I understand I I I can agree with your assessment there. I think that that could have been partially the reason but you know phil spencer when when he talked about you know square enix and stuff like that he didn't mention any i know he wasn't going to mention like oh like but he didn't like you know apologize or he wasn't apologetic to them when talking about them he seems a bit also like bitter that they're not you know delivering games on xbox oh it, <laughs> i can't go into a lot of detail but it, there's definitely is bitterness <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Square Enix would have. I, all right. I would say, and and people are pointing to me like, oh, as much shit as I talk about Square Enix. All right. Yes. Had Xbox bought Square Enix back before they sold off their Western, I would have been excited because there's a portion of Square Enix that I liked. If Xbox would have purchased only the Western division of Square Enix, like Embracer Group did, I still would have been excited because that's the division of Square Enix that I like. I care less about the the Japanese side or the uh, the the. Um, What's funny Final is Fantasy I like both side. of the sides. Yeah. So, so that's like, my. I, I, I'm sorry, I do think that Sega mm -hmm. has a more variety of style games. And at this point, without the Western division with Square Enix, mm -hmm. as a whole, they would be the better buy. But mm -hmm. no one can cannot deny having a Final Fantasy VII remake part two, which is Rebirth, on your platform exclusively mm -hmm. doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> no, it definitely hurts. It's uh, uh No, I'm it, talking about for PlayStation. Yeah, I think, I think a play any X if Xbox made a play for Square Enix, I think let's say because you have to think about it, think about the how the, the the tides were turning in 2020 when Xbox was doing they showed off the you know the Series X and they you know bought Bethesda. Could you imagine in 2021 and let's say April or May of 2021 we get a freaking blog post that shows the Xbox Square Enix picture that would have made people hurt that like. Because Square Enix means more to PlayStation than anything else. So I, I feel like I've always felt Xbox and Bethesda were closer together in Zenimax because of the, their history. 
But Xbox buying Square Enix, that's uh, like I feel like that would have had more of an impact. Xbox buying Activision um Blizzard is it's a power play, it's a power move, especially if they can get it through. But I feel like things that would have really hurt the PlayStation fanboys and fan base would have been a Square Enix or a Sega. Or, well, <laughs> Activision could hurt PlayStation financially. It hurts PlayStation. Yeah, it hurts but, SIE. I'm talking about the PlayStation but, fans. Square, Square Enix yeah. being bought would hurt PlayStation as a business because they work with them so much yeah. and get so much time to exclusives. From yeah, them. Square Enix what have would, carried PlayStation over the last what, four years. What What would PlayStation do without Square Enix at this point? Yeah, they would have nothing. That their Square Enix is responsible would have for seven, nothing. Square they, Enix is responsible for seventy five percent of PlayStation games, output this year. Yeah, their their output of games would be drastically reduced. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. If Square Enix is responsible for PlayStation seventy five percent of PlayStation releases this year, and that's me just doing head with us, no research. And not to mention Final Fantasy sixteen is their not uh is their most sold PlayStation five game right now. Yeah, yeah. it's not even their game. Here's the question: Do you think that Square Enix eventually gets bought by bought by PlayStation? I I, I think so. I think that should have happened. I think that should have been their uh, power play. But right now, PlayStation reaps the benefits of Square Enix as an independent publisher because they. What happens if like an Amazon swims and buys them? Then I think that's better for Xbox. Yeah, because they even if here's the thing, even if they even if they don't make the games mm -hmm. exclusive, mm -hmm. it would still help because another entity is owning those games, and if they're more serious about multiplats, I think Xbox would have a better ch time yeah. negotiating yeah. with Amazon than and, they would. And, and and what the thing is, so so Amazon and, could and be what that that's saying if they don't do the timed exclusive yeah. the the exclusivity. Once if Amazon popped in their bot Square Enix and just put all their shit on their Luna thing exclusive, yeah. Yeah. like then that would hurt Square Enix personally in in their um uh, titles. I think what what would happen is I think there's an incentive. Uh, so let's say if Amazon bought screenings, there's an incentive for Xbox to negotiate with them because they both have something each other want, right? Uh, Amazon needs content for Luna. And we know Xbox has been giving out these cloud deals um, for other, but they didn't give it to Amazon. They didn't give it to the, you know, the other big players. That could be something like, hey, you know, let's get some of these, your, uh, uh, some of these goodies from those ABK goodies or the Zenimax goodies, whatever. And, you know, we could definitely work with you for the Square Enix titles and, and, and put them in your subscription service. Boom, deal done. <laughs> like, so yeah, if, if, you know, obviously outside of PlayStation, I think PlayStation should be the one that had to get this version of Square Enix. If not, if, if Amazon gets them, um, I think it will be better, you know, for everyone else. Or, or the, thing, the scary thing is if, if, if Amazon's gaming thing doesn't get its foot off the ground, then Square Enix becomes devalued and they either have to close them down or they have to sell them for cheaper than what they got them for. Um, that's when Microsoft that's when, pops up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that can very well happen, dude. That can definitely happen. I, I do think that there's still a solid chance they buy Sega. Yeah. I hope so. I, I'm just curious to see where those conversations left. Clearly, based off Square Enix's actions over the past year, it, it tells us that the the whole xbox the microsoft square enix thing fell through right sega on the other hand has only been putting more and more content on xbox and even like you know with the whole persona 3 which then i you know like being revealed on xbox stage their new ip being revealed on xbox stage and they're both launching in to i think game pass and stuff like that so i think uh there's something to to Sega. The other things that were on their list that had me, um, you know, in intrigued. Oh, Paradox Interactive was the other publisher. Um, what does Paradox Interactive do? What did games do they make? Let me just Google search that. I think they're a publisher. Yeah, th yeah, but they're public. So th they had they had five hundred five games and all that stuff uh, on their thing. But the, the individual studios they had Thunderful. They had they had the people that made Callisto Protocol on their list. Uh, Str Striking Distance. They also had a uh, Sobo, obviously that makes sense. Uh, Certain Affinity was on their list. Uh, 
Oh, Paradox Interactive make all those sim games. This would have been the play for PC. Paradox, they do city skylines. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty much the games that they do. Um they do all those PC games, those weird games that like don't sell. They're just all PC. <laughs> Alyssa Paradox Interactive game. I'm trying to think of the weird, most popular game, BattleTech. Uh, they do, uh, city skylines, obviously. Um, they do, I'm trying to think of any of these things. Empire of Sin. That was that, my, my cousin had a good time playing that game. Um, which was that, uh, mob game. Um, but it was like an RTS. Yeah, they, they don't make any damn game that I would actually play. Uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah, they don't make any game that I would actually play. Uh Crusader Kings. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a straight up PC play, which I guess is fine. Um Yeah. But um but yeah, they they had you no know, there was interesting studios that I was happy to see there. They had the people that make Kenna Bridge of Spirits on their list. And that game's not mm-hmm. even on Xbox. Um they had Housemark, and that was before PlayStation bought them. And you know how we all know Housemark did Returnal. Um, they had a lot of people on that list, and you know, and Remedy was on it. Remedy was on there. Yep. Um, uh, Team Seventeen was on it. Team, yeah, that's damn. Mm-hmm. Um, home, uh, home Focus Interactive. Home, was focus on Home it. Interactive, which I think is a, would be a nice addition for anyone. Um, I, yeah, I'm curious. I want to like I want to see what happens. That's why I need this this ABK deal to get through because I want to see the other. Because I think I'm more interested in the other stuff. Yeah, Call of Duty is big. Activision's uh big, and it's gonna be big for Game Pass. But I feel like they could the other stuff that was on their list were great for Impact for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, let's see what else. Uh, we know obviously the the case is you know pending judge review. We should probably know something over the next couple of days. Um, and uh, apparently the judge, the, the judge decision and findings are going to be sealed. So just to give you a heads up, uh, how we're going to find out either the FTC is going to post on Twitter that they won the injunction or Microsoft is going to come out and said that, you know, they're going to say they're going to give their closing date. That, that that's pretty much that's how we're going to find out it's not going to be like anything formal from the court or anything like that because she's making this uh her judgment is going to be sealed um trying how to have a ju- how do you have a sealed judgment yes <laughs> it's like they're they're not going to let us see how they came to their decision it, well to be honest i think they were complaining about people recording in the room yeah. so yeah that was a like i didn't block people from doing the streams mm-hmm yeah um there's a lot uh, i'm gonna give it there's a couple people out there and i i often do these complaints uh like colin moriarty he has he does his you know sacred symbol podcast um obviously you know who he is he has he posted on twitter about he does. I feel like he does this every week. He questions why people are rooting for the loser or Xbox. And in this case, he characterized it as uh, the ones who can't, you know, who fail at making games, right? Or making good games. Why are we rooting for them? And um, people got upset with me because my thing is that why is that a question, right? Why is it that people have a problem with people just preferring xbox like why should an xbox fan always have to explain themselves why they like xbox and that drives me nuts from whether it's people like colin whether it's people like reforge um coming through and they're and they're giving their commentary about it it's like they're they're asking these questions as if there's like as if it requires some sort of answer like what do everybody want do they want us to just be fucking diehard PlayStation fanboys and that's it. Like I, I, I don't understand the notion is like, yeah, yeah, dude, some people just like Xbox and that's okay. 
it's like for some reason there's got to be uh, there's this this written rule that you have to explain why you like xbox or why you root for them or why should i shouldn't have to be like you get shamed for being excited for you know studio acquisitions and them bolstering up their uh content capability I just find it very strange and odd and it's really annoying. So I I know there's there's this link, obviously, ILP and, you know, Colin and and stuff like that. So I don't want to put you in an odd situation, but there's these things that he does that drives me insane in regards to his commentary. If you want, uh, I can email him, get him on here. We can ask him. (laughs) Yeah, that that would be more. Uh, I'll, I'll email him today. I'll email him today. I'm because I, I, I would love. I was going to get him on. I was going to get him on a addict show, but I'll put him on here first. Okay, that'll be worth it. That would be worth it. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit him up today. All right. So what what do you got uh going on? I don't think I. I think we're pretty much coming towards the end of the show. Um, we said there wasn't too much going on. Obviously, Final Fantasy mm-hmm. did its thing. The FTC thing is uh still going. CMA tried to put in the last minute Hell Mary to delay the case because they're they're feeling um the pressure that the FTC is probably going to lose. So they're trying to again trying to block it for them by delaying their case. Their their judge uh denied their motion. Um. Um, I'm trying to think. It's uh, it's like they were it's like they were trying to pull a uh, a ring moment, like yeah. in Lord of the Rings at the end, where he's like, "Oh, Frodo's never going to make it to the mountain. All all, it's all, all his gaze is on the mountain." Yep. So that uh, Argon just pulls up with the rest of their army and just gets all their attention to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So also, thing I've just been telling, and I know Cog Cognito's been playing this. Do you got one of these, Attic? The Rogue. No. All right. So. I've been playing some of it. I'm trying to find like a good game that I want to stick with. Right now, it's been really been Planet of Lana, I'm playing a little bit of Outer Worlds. Uh, uh, just trying to get myself into like a uh, slow paced game. This game, this thing is pretty good. It's 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 pretty good. However, the battery life sucks. And the issue is, if you want long long gaming sessions, which could be a problem for your neck. Like I tend to play this when I'm in bed, or when I'm not next to my um computer or tv uh but the thing is is like the games you play will determine how long the battery life is and if i have to stay with this thing plugged in i'm better off playing on a console right so just to give people up yeah it's cool to have it's it's very powerful um it plays it it, it literally acts as an xbox freaking portable uh, especially for those subscribed to game pass if you're subscribed to game pass ultimate all those games that's there is also a awesome streaming device too so when you don't want to drain all your battery and you don't want to um you know because da- it takes a whole a long time to download full games on this so you be selective with the games you install on this bad boy it's only a 512 gigabyte ssd um this acts as a good like streaming device too like so there's some games that i will play on a cloud like Halo Infinite, Forza Horizons, and some other games uh, through Game Pass. Uh, the games that I have installed on this is Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, Spider-Man Remastered. I have Planet of Lana. I have Outer Worlds, and I have, um, oh man, what other game did I put on here? Uh, Asterios, uh Curse of the Stars. But I gotta really start installing like shorter, shorter games. Those like quick things. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the Game Pass to see which games are more beneficial. I know there's a couple games that are like, you know, quick work games that just dropped on Game Pass, uh, like Bram- Brumble. Bramble looks like an interesting game. Um, I'm going to download it on Xbox, see what it looks like. If the graphics isn't all that crazy, I'm going to download this bad boy on here and finish my gameplay on that. But, um, Attic, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Yeah, so this, uh, we're going to have an interesting show tomorrow on ILP. Mm-hmm. King's already going crazy with uh, all this recent stuff, especially Jim Ryan on the state on, on the the court procedures. Uh, we actually have a big guest. I'm not allowed to say the guest. Mm-hmm. Smooth knows the guest. Um, he he will be on sometime uh, this month. I'm not even going to tell you what time. Uh, look more forward towards the end of the month, not the beginning. Uh, definitely a good week. Uh, we hopefully next week we'll have a little bit more to talk about in terms of games. This week, besides Final Fantasy, has been kind of uh, uh, dying down 
you know, I'm hoping I'll have more to talk about Starfield in the next month. Uh, but we'll have to see how that. Hopefully, man. Hopefully, I'm looking forward to see the like the public preview of Starfield. We're now in July. We got July, uh, and pretty much at the uh, yeah, dude. July next month is August. At that point, you know, Starfield is due to come out September mm-hmm. 6. Reviews have to start happening, right? And then they got early access, which is August 31st, September 1st. So we should start seeing previews either this month or like early next month. If it, I mean, it got to be an IGN first pretty soon, right? Um, if mm-hmm. they got it on that game. So uh, September is also a big month uh, for um, Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. There's a lot of day ones coming in the month of September uh, for Game Pass um, that um, actually I'm going to just go uh through right quick i'm gonna use my rogue ally i hate to do this to you guys but it, it i would be remiss if i did not uh show you uh some of the hopefully they, they're updated on the store but um there's a lot like a ton of games coming to game pass day one in september alone that um i don't even think is worth like even if they if we just go based off what we know um, and not the un- they don't need any of like the un- unannounced announcements, pretty much. Uh, let me close this out, get out of here. Uh, ooh, game pass, game pass, game pass. There you go. Let's see if I can get, th- I got a lot of crap on my uh, wasting people's time at the sorry, end of the dude. show, dude. Uh, I gotta, I gotta show it, man. It's just, it's just like there's just so much going on. I, I, I feel like the moment people buy that thing they just become obsessed yeah i we, we sure the like the 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 case was it isn't made out of like cocaine like <laughs> did you get like a a little sn- a sniff of cocaine when you opened it up because i feel like people they buy that it's mm-hmm. like golem with the ring on lord of the rings yeah, dude, by pressure. i almost like, i almost really like i i was contemplating whether i was going to keep it right um but damn they didn't they did not update it because there's more than this coming um to uh game pass uh in september but right now it's, it's just they got starfield liza p and payday 3 there's a ton more coming to game pass and it's just not updated on the game pass uh uh store uh but if you guys want to see it uh this is a perfect again xbox handheld also stray finally coming to the preferred platform august 10th um that was the PS Plus uh, game, PS5 game. People were super, super upset with it. It finally coming to Xbox August 10th. Um, Fist, which I'm actually probably going to download on here. Matter of fact, Fist is um, on Game Pass uh, right now. That was also a PlayStation uh, uh, timed exclusive. And um, yeah, yeah, man. It's been great. It's been great, man. Thank you guys for tuning in to Play Xbox Episode 7. Make sure you submit your questions for uh, Episode 8 once BG posts them. Uh, this show, you know, is enhanced and is uh, possible by the members of Patreon. So make sure you subscribe to Weapon Wheel Patreon. Make sure you subscribe to the Weapon Wheel channel. And also support Attic, Gaming Attic, uh, and Iron Lords Podcast. And, of course, Kid Smooth Channel. As always... Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. Peace. And even with my last minute ramble, we were still under 90 minutes. That is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Peace. That's the whole point. That was the whole goal. (laughs)